Hello and welcome to Illidan LARP. My name is Nick. I'm a member of the design team at Illidan LARP and today I want to continue my series looking at character creation and working through the different character classes and the one I want to talk about today is the rogue. As I've mentioned before every uh, character has both a base class and then a specialist class. Their base class, in this instance the rogue, gives a nice rounded set of general skills for that sort of character and then the specialist class goes on and develops that character in a very specific direction. The uh, four specialist classes available to the rogue are the assassin, the thief, the ranger and the trickster. Right, well, let's get straight in and having a look at the particular skills. Now, the rogue has eight skills. Acrobatics, dodge, hiding, light armor use, rogue power, short weapon mastery, thrown weapon mastery, and two weapon mastery. So it gives you that set of skills about maneuvering, about hiding and concealment, and also about being able to be a uh, lightly armed fighting type. So looking at the skills, first of all, acrobatics. You're very agile and nimble. With this skill, you're able to move in ways that normal people wouldn't. So you're able to jump that extra bit further. At higher levels, you can climb sheer surfaces. You can uh, free yourself from bombs. You can fall a distance without taking damage within the constraints of the game. Second skill for rogues is dodge. This is a combat skill and calling dodge. It costs one power point and it completely negates the damage done from one ordinary blow, which is an ordinary blow, a double blow or a through blow. At higher levels, you can spend more power points to um, see off higher levels of damage, such as disarm or crush or even uh, ranged blows or uh, magical damage or traps. Next skill for the rogue is hiding. Hiding is really useful. It allows you to put your hand over your head like this. This is a LARP convention, which means you are there, but you can't be seen unless someone has some way of seeing something that is magically or specially hidden. Now you start off, it costs one power point and you have to stay in place. As you improve your hiding skill, you'll be able to both hide and move. Um, and that costs more power points. Very useful for sneaking around or in combat to get yourself in the right position to unleash a, uh, a sudden a hidden attack or something. The next skill for the rogue is light armor use. This allows you to wear any uh, light armor and uh, also to repair it and uh, light armor gives you an extra one hit point per location uh, which is very useful given that you only start with one hit point per location and I don't think any of the rogue skills have any ways of increasing that base amount of hits so light armor is very useful. Next skill for the rogue is rogue power. Now quite a few skills in um, Illidan LARP require power points to generate effects so you know we spoke about hide requiring one power point you need to buy this skill to get those power points and every level gives you five power points so if you start off with apprentice rogue power that gives you five power points and apprentice level hiding that means you can hide disappear five times and after that you have to recharge your power points in some way Last three skills available to the rogue are short weapon mastery, thrown weapon mastery and two weapon mastery. They uh, all allow um, certain effects. You can see those in the rule book. So with short weapon mastery, which is any weapon of about 18 inches and shorter. So you're looking at a, a very short short sword or a long dagger. Um, with this, you can start out by calling through so you can effectively ignore the armor that your target is wearing, go straight through, hit the person underneath. Thrown weapon mastery means you're able to use thrown weapons, do special calls with them. Again, one power point at apprentice level, you can throw something and call through, which is very useful to be able to do. And finally, two weapon mastery, you're ambidextrous, you can use 
two weapons at once. So uh, you start off with your off hand. I am right handed. So my off hand is my left hand. In my left hand, I could have a short weapon under 18 inches. At expert level, I could use a long weapon in my off hand. So a long weapon in either hand, that would be very useful. Um, and then master level, you can start to use weapon calls in your off hand. So um, that's a, a, if you want to fight with two weapons, if that's your style, two weapon mastery is a very good way of doing that. OK, we're going to talk about the first of the specialist classes now, and we're going to look at the assassin, the hired killer. The assassin is very much taking that base set of light combat skills and adding to them to make them more deadly. The first skill on the assassin list is assassin power, which like rogue power gives you an extra five power points per level. So you could start off by having assassin power and rogue power, and that will give you 10 power points to play with. The second skill, um, very assassin-y, is backstab. This allows you to do damage to people uh, at apprentice level. If you attack someone from behind, your attack could do double damage and you get that for free. So you do have to be behind them. But if you can do that, double do that for free. Expert level, you can strike an unarmed body from behind with a blunt weapon called subdue. They're knocked unconscious. Always very useful to be able to do that if something's um, going absolutely crazy or if someone on your own side has been charmed to attack you. Sneak around the back, clock them over the back of the head. Don't actually do them over the back of the head because we don't do head hits, but strike them between the shoulders with a um, with a blunt weapon and shout subdue. Problem solved. Third skill on the assassin list is craft military equipment. We've already talked about this under the warrior. It's basically like the artisan skill, but it's limited to armor and weapons. But assassins have an affinity for weapons, so you're able to make armor and weapons. It's one of the craft skills that you can access. Next skill is defensive combat. Now we're getting into some of the more specialist combat roles. This is where the assassin is a little nearer to some of the fighter um, aspects. So with defensive combat, you can use power points to call resist on double or through blows, which turns them into a single blow. And as you get higher levels, so you can call resist or even reflect on other things. So at expert level, someone hits you with a double. You spend two power points, shout reflect. They take the double damage on themselves. We have a more subterfuge skill now for the assassin, which is disguise. You can you change your appearance if you can actually role play this and use makeup and prosthetics and extra costume. That's really cool. And at apprentice level, you can disguise yourself as another member of your species and maintain that effect for up to two hours. Higher levels of disguise allows you to last for longer within your disguise. And uh, even higher levels, you can be a member of a different species. So if you're a human, you can pretend to be an orc. Um, very useful for assassins, very useful for subterfuge and, and getting into places and uh, gaining trust where normally you wouldn't have it. Right. The next two skills, again, it expands the weapon skills available to the assassin. So they are long weapon mastery and missile weapon mastery. So long weapons are anything between 18 and 42 inches. You can use them with one hand and it allows you to do double moving at higher levels for disarm, resist disarm and so forth, all the way up to critical blow at grand master level. Missile weapon mastery means you are allowed to use missile weapons. That's bows and crossbows and also issue special weapon calls when you are using them. So uh, at apprentice level, you can use one PowerPoint, fire the arrow, you shout double. If it hits, it does two points of damage. So you can cause pain from a distance. Last but definitely not least for the assassin is the skill poisoner. This is another craft skill. It's quite a rare one. Not many people have this. Uh, the assassin does. And it allows you to make poison starting at apprentice level with the common poisons list going all the way up to legendary poisons at Grandmaster. Now, by getting hold of these poisons, um, 
I will have to do a video about poisons and other crafting. But one thing to note is if you can do damage which ignores armor, then you can be have a much greater chance of actually doing damage that inflicts poison on your target. So if there's a knight with big heavy metal armor, you hit them with your dagger, it'll just put the poison onto their armor, no effect. But if you call through, then you will ignore the armor, you will hit the person underneath. So through poison pain, for example, you will get that poison onto the thing underneath through their armor. Just a little tip to note there. OK, let's have a look at the second specialist class under Rogue. And this one is the Thief. The Thief is all about stealing and acquisition and uh, deception. And uh, they're kind of that utility rogue. So you start with that good mix of maneuvement, evasion, light combat skills from the rogue. And you can add the Thief skills on top. The first thief skill is Black Marketeer. This is a bit like the merchant skill that we've mentioned under Artisan. You are able to buy and sell uh, through contacting a ref. Um, and you will begin the game uh, with a list of things that you can buy and sell and the prices you can do that for. As you increase your skill at Black Marketeer, so you will end up with a wider range of things that you can buy and sell and also the prices get better. Your The way it's different from the merchant skill is Black Marketeer has access to a different range of goods. So if you're wanting to buy things that are a bit dodgy, uh, Black Marketeer is more likely to get hold of them than your standard merchant. Right, next skill for Thief is Deceptions and this uses PowerPoints but uh, you can basically use it to use your, your persuasive powers and your glib tongue. So at apprentice level, you may call a suggestion, effectively the same as the suggestion spell, for one PowerPoint. This puts a thought in the mind of your target. So, you know, you might say you're being stopped by the town guard and you might go, hmm, well, by power of deception, uh, suggestion. I don't think you need to search me. I clearly look like an upstanding, honest member of society. And that thought will be planted in the guard's mind and the person role playing the guard will role play effectively. Now, they might dismiss the thought and say, no orders or orders. We've got to search them. Or they might say, you know what? It's been a long day. You're fine. Go on through you go. Next skill for the rogue sorry for the thief is disabled device this is all about identifying and disabling traps traps are usually notified by having a certain label stuck to the object which is trapped uh, you get a list of what those labels mean so sometimes we put labels that are red herring so someone who doesn't disable trap might see a, a pink sticker with a star on it and think oh that might be trapped better not touch it that could just be a decoy or it could be a trap but with disabled device you'll be able to check your list and you go oh yeah pink sticker with uh, whatever it is on it that's a trap ref i can disable this trap and then you can access whatever it is trap removed the next skill for the thief is disguise, same as assassin. So you can disguise yourself as another member of your species, maintain the effect for up to two hours and apprentice and so on. The uh, next skill we want to look at is evade. I like this one. Evade allows you to get out of tight situations. Once per refresh, you can activate this by declaring evade and doing whatever the skill tells you to. So at apprentice level, you can um, call evade, you uh, put your hand above your head, show you're not there, and you can move three steps in any direction and then come straight back into the game. You can't evade through solid objects, no evading through doors, that would be silly. But um, let's say there's someone who's, you know, grabbed you or gotten hold of you, whatever it is, and, uh, you know, you're being you're being interrogated. You can suddenly go evade and appear three steps away. Higher levels of evade means that you can go uh, further with your instant move. So um, getting even further 
out of trouble. You could maybe use evade to get into trouble if you wanted. You could evade into a combat if you were that daft. OK, but think of think creatively how you can use it. You're a thief. Use your skills creatively. Next skill for the rogue, for the thief, is evaluate. And uh, for this, you're basically given a price list, giving the value of various items. And you start off having a price list of some crude uh, quality items. And as you increase that skill, so you get more items on your list and at a higher grade. And um, yeah, yeah, that improves like that. Next skill, uh, skill number seven for the thief is lock picking. So we do lock picking by giving you uh, some numbers for uh, lock codes. Every lock we use um, one of those ones which have little numbers that you have to scroll around and get the right code on it. Um, if you have an apprentice skill, you are issued with two digits of apprentice lock codes. Let's say we'll give you uh, five, seven. So you come across a lock with three numbers on it. You go five, seven and you keep trying all the ones through there. You'll get through it in no time. If it's an expert lock, then it'll be a different set of lock codes. Um, so it pays to uh, get to know those skills at higher levels. Right. Last skill for the thief is perceptions. You've got really sharp senses, makes you aware of things. We have some ways of hiding stuff within the game. One is that we put a checked cloth um, a, on top of something. That means ordinary people can't see it. You can't see it unless you have a skill like perceptions or you use magic. But if you have that, you can see a check cloth and you're fine. At higher levels, you can see hidden enemies. So say you walk into a room, there's someone in the corner like this looking shifty. You can see them because you have perceptions. And uh, above that, you can be immune to effects that would impede your senses, such as a blindness spell. Or you can even at Grandmaster level, you can see invisible enemies. So uh, very useful for seeing what's there. OK, let's get on to the third specialist class for uh, the rogue, and that is Ranger. The Ranger is the outdoors survivalist, um, good with animals, good with a lot of outdoor surviving skills. So let's have a look at what they've got. First skill for the Ranger is favoured enemy. When you choose this skill, you have to declare one foe from a set list and they are your favoured enemy for the rest of the time that your character um, goes on. So it gives you advantages against enemies of that type. Let's say you choose undead. At apprentice level, your favoured enemy, enemy can never hide from you. So undead that's hiding or, or suddenly goes non-corporeal, you can see them because you know undead and they are your favoured enemy. You can also, once per refresh, call resist to one magical effect from spells that they cast. At expert level, uh, it gets better. All your weapon calls against your favoured enemy can be called as a double double point uh, damage for no power point cost. So uh, and it gets better as things increase. Second skill for the ranger is find familiar. You get to have an animal which you bond with and it shares power with you. Now, this is represented by taking like a small plushie or something like that. And that is your familiar. They start off with two power points which you can use as your own if you're holding them. Your familiar also has one hit point. If it dies, you are instantly drained to zero power points and life is not happy for you. As you increase the skill of Find Familiar, so they get more power points at master level, they get an extra hit point and you are able to do certain things. So at expert level, you can send your familiar up to 10 meters away from you and you can see and hear through their senses. So you get your little squirrel and uh, you persuade them just to potter into the, the, the woodland glade or whatever it is and have a look around and you can see what they see. So very useful for scouting. Just hope they don't get hit. Next skill for the ranger is missile weapon mastery. As mentioned already under assassin, rangers and bows, they just go together. 
The next skill, again, in common with the assassin is poisoner. As a ranger, you're used to being out and about. You know what plants do what, and you know how to use plants to make noxious substances to help you while you're hunting. The next skill for the ranger is ranger law. Rangers have a little bit of magic. Every skill which has law, L-O-R-E, in the title has spells. So at apprentice level, you can cast the first level spell, Entangle, and the person you cast that at is held in place for 30 seconds, providing they are standing in undergrowth. You can't cast it in a building or in an open field, but if you're in the trees and there are brambles around, you can entangle them and it holds their feet in place for 30 seconds. And as you go up, you can get higher level spells that cost more power points to cast, such as Charm Animal, Hunter's Mark, and at the top level, Commune with Nature. Next skill is Ranger Power. That's another way of you accessing an extra five power points per level of those. Very useful if you've got to power all those weapon skills or uh, your Ranger Law magical spells. The next skill for Ranger, Ranger is Survivalist. This means you can do some cooking, you can forage and you can hunt for gathering materials. It also means that you can make snacks which are like food based potions. Um, they don't give you a refresh in the same way that a meal does, but you can just grab a snack and it has a small effect like giving you back a hit point or a power point or what it will give letting you do a, a double damage hit, whatever it may be. So that's one of the crafting skills along with Poisoner that the Ranger has. And the final Ranger skill is Tracking. Really useful skill, this one. Now, often in Illidan, one of the mechanics we use is uh, having a pit marker. You'll be going off with your group of adventurers uh, into the wilderness and you'll see a sign up saying something like, you see a cave with steps leading down into the gloom. If you wish to go into this cave, report back to uh, the DM, the, uh, the, the, uh, yeah, the games masters at God, the general organization desk, and say to them, we are going into the cave, which has the label, whatever it is. Underneath that, it will say tracking code and there'll be a long string of nonsensical letters. Unless you have tracking skills, in which case you will see certain blocks of letters mean certain things. So you might know if the letters A, J, Q, L are there in that order that it means um, Fey. You may know that if the letters G, H, R, A are in there in that order, it means two or three. So you can do a bit of scouting around, a bit of looking, and you can work out the sort of creatures, maybe the number, um, and the sort of things that are there. And that gives you extra information before you go into an encounter. So you might gather that, oh, hang on, there are Tyrons in there, and we've been having some fights with Tyrons in this adventure, and the numbers say there are quite a lot of them Right. OK, we'd best not go in here if there's just two of us and we're lightly armoured. Let's go and get some let's go and get some fighters and go in a bit more tooled up. Right. We're on to the last character uh, specialist class for the uh, rogue now. And we're looking at trickster. The trickster um, combines uh, magic with subterfuge. So some of them are hard skills, some of them are magical skills. They start off, they have disguise, disguise just like uh, thief and also assassin, as already mentioned. Second skill for trickster is illusion law. Here you get to cast spells at first level. You get the spell distract. You cast it, you point in a direction and your target will briefly avert their attention that way. Very good for sneaking past guards. At uh, expert level, that becomes cause fear. At master level, it's invisibility. At grandmaster, you can cast mass invisibility. So not just you, but a whole group of willing targets can all become invisible. 
The uh, next couple of skills for the trickster are combat skills that we've already discussed. So long weapon mastery, any weapon between 18 and 42 inches, uh, being able to do special weapon calls with those. And then missile weapon mastery, so bows and crossbows and being able to use power points to uh, upgrade those to do double damage, disarm, whatever. The next score, score, um, skill for the trickster is read scroll. Now, reading scrolls mean you can take a magical scroll and provided you have the right level of read scroll, you can cast that scroll. It's a one shot thing. It gets used up when you when you use it. And in reading the scroll, you can then cast it. It doesn't have to be a spell that you will have access to yourself. If you find a scroll that was written by uh, a priest or an alchemist or whatever, and it's their spell, you can still cast it as long as you've got read scroll at the right level. This means you can get some really interesting effects, borrowing spells from other disciplines and applying them to your context. So at apprentice level, you can cast any magic scroll inscribed with a first level spell through to Grandmaster, which is casting any magic scroll inscribed with a fifth level spell, fourth level spell. There are no fifth level spells. Ignore me when I said that. Honest. OK, after read scroll, we then have tricks to law. This is more um, spells. So these are about manipulating the world around you. First level is manipulate objects so you can telekinetically move things around. Um, at expert level, you get spider climb so you can scale sheer surfaces. Um, at master level, it's blindness uh, and so forth. Just a couple more skills to go and then we're finished. Number seventh skill for trickster is trickster power. This is like uh, ranger power or assassin power. It gives you an extra five power points. And given that you're a spellcaster with weapon skills, you're probably going to need a lot of power points as a trickster. And finally, we have a craft skill for the trickster, and that is right scroll. So you're kind of half mage, half rogue. So we've, you've, we've given you the scroll writing skill. You can prepare a magic scroll to receive a spell equal to the level of the skill you've got. So at Apprentice, you can write first level scrolls. At Expert, you can do second level scrolls. Now, what you actually do is the skill prepares the scroll and then a source casts the spell onto the scroll. It is then a scroll of that spell. So you could use it to prepare a first level magic scroll and then cast one of your first level spells, such as manipulate object onto it. You do that yourself. That's great. Or you could work with another spellcaster and you could prepare a first level scroll and get your friend who is a healer to cast a first level healing spell on it. Very useful. Or you can uh, use other objects. So let's say somebody's got a, uh, a magic ring that casts a first level spell once per day. You can create your magic scroll ready to receive a spell and with their ring they can cast their once per day effect onto the scroll it is then contained in the scroll for you to use with or someone else to use with a read scroll ability at a later time right well that's a bit of a gallop through rogue and the four classes that go with it i hope it's given you a little bit of an idea of the skills how they work and the flavor of that um there's a lot of fun to be had playing a rogue. They get a good mix of abilities, some craft, some spells, some combat, some sneaking, maneuvering, subterfuge. So there's uh, a lot you can do within the context of the rogue. I hope uh, this has helped you see what you can do with them. And I hope that I'll uh, get to see you soon, uh, get to LARP together and I'll see you on a field for some um, fun and games soon. Take care.